heart in the heart of man. Nothing can satisfy the heart of God you know, of God's creation without a focus to worship Him. So we've got to understand that God, heaven is calling us to worship him. The father is calling us to worship him, to live a life of devotion. If you begin to live that life of devotion, then you realize that it's easy for you to flow in the prophetic. Because prophetic flows is like a stream that flows from the throne of the father. It's not something you cook up. It's not something you, you know, you, you, you stay, you stay yourself to, you know, to do. The prophetic is beyond the gift is a life. Ah. Oh. God Almighty. It's beyond the gift. If you understand what the prophetic ministry is all about, you will understand it's about the passion of God. The prophetic is about the passion of God. It's about the heartbeat of God. It's about the desire of God. It's about the longing of the Father. It's about the cry of the heart of the Father. It's not just about, oh, I've got a gift. I can give you a word. It's beyond that. Those who don't understand but you know what the prophetic is all about, you know, they reduce it to a gift, they reduce it, they reduce it to an ability to see something and hear something. Guess what? Even those who operate in the familiar spirit, they do all that. They they touch the you know that that which you know, uh, you know uh, what my name call the leaven power of the soul, the leaven power of the soul. They touch that dimension of the soul. They touch that dimension of their soul that that still carry all right that falling falling power you know of 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 the human nature and therefore they can see things they they do they tap into all kinds of dimensions and they can see things they can know things and you'll be shocked you'll be surprised wow this man knows this thing he knows this thing about me no he's using an ungodly power he's tapping into a foreign spirit to minister to you and because you're so deaf and dumb and blind to the things of the spirit you think it's god no you cannot operate in the prophetic without you having a life of devotion i always tell people my prophetic you know life began journey began in the place of devo- in the place of devotion in the place of prayer 1990 1991 god began to speak to me about prayer about coming into into his into his closet about coming into the secret place about knowing him it's from there i never really get to know what prophetic is all about no no i never write any book about prophetic you know i never had this hunger or desire to go into the prayer to know about the prophetic no i just had a passion for god if you ask me all i had was a passion a hunger i was so hungry for god that is like if i don't have him i'm gonna die i was so passionate in my passion in my hunger in my quest in my longing for him he began to show me things he began to tell me things he began to reveal things to me and then i discovered that, that all that was happening to me they call it the prophetic (laughs) so forget about the rhetoric forget about the title key into the life once you have a desire for him all these things that you are looking for you are searching for the bible says they will be added to you you cannot seek the kingdom of god without knowing the king so when we say seeking for the kingdom of god there cannot be a seeking of the kingdom of god without you first seeking the king on the throne To seek the kingdom is to first seek the king. Once you know the king, you begin to know. Because you see, the kingdom of God only shows you about the ways, about the culture of the kingdom. But guess what? You can know about the culture. Like a lot of people today will talk about the kingdom. You know, my God, you just need to listen to people talk about principles of the kingdom. Kingdom, the kingdom business. Kingdom career. Kingdom this. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. But guess what? They are clueless about the king who sits on the throne. They're talking kingdom of God, but another king is ruling their life. Another king is the one defining their motivation. There cannot be a kingdom of God without you knowing the king. So as I round up this morning, because I see now I'm beginning to get fired up. I need to attend to my children before they go to school. I want you to understand this. God is calling us to the place of devotion. It's not about your ministry. It's not about your career. It's not about your children. It's not about your business. It's not about your work. It's not about your husband. It's not about your wife. It's about you engaging your creator. 
is about you engaging. You see, all this thing that we we running after that we think actually defines us, our children, our you know, our career, our wife, our husband, you know, our ministry, and all this thing that we we're so anxious about. To me, they reflect something that we're so insecure. That's why you say a man of God will fight and do all kinds of things. Somebody break away from his ministry or somebody's no longer in his ministry. He will fight and go into all forms of carnality. And you wonder, who are you working for? If, the, if it's God that you're working for, must you go to all this land to fight and to try to prove a point? Let it go. When Isaac dug the first well, you know, in, in the land of Gerea, they took it from him. He dug the second well. They took it from him. Until he came to Rehoboth. He said, this one, God has made room for me. When God make room for you, guess what? You will go anywhere without you bothering. And that thing that God has given to you will still remain intact. Whatever God gives to you, you don't need to, you don't need to fight to protect it by your own power. That's the point I'm making. I find rest in where I am. And that's what true worship does. True life of devotion give you rest. In the midst of storm, you have peace. In the midst of hurricane and, you know, uh, 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 recessions and, you know, political upheavals, you find peace that transcends human wisdom and understanding. This is your first call and your and your ultimate duty. It's your first and your ultimate duty to worship God. Live a life of worship. Live a life of devotion. You will know his ways. You will know his will. You will know his path. You will discover the ancient path. You will walk in it and you will never be afraid. I have no fear. The only time I'm afraid is when I'm not in his presence. The only time I'm afraid is when I have lost my direction in him. So if you want to find your way, if you want to find the path, if you want to connect to life, connect to God first. Connect back to your source. Stop running after things. Stop running after the things of God. Pursue the Father. Let me repeat what I've said. Stop running after the things of God. Pursue the heart of the Father and he will give you things that you don't even ask for. That's the secret. There are those who know the acts of God. There are those who know the ways of God. Oh, the, our, our world, the church today has been deceived about, about, regarding the acts of God. There's a more excellent ministry. It's called the ways of God. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That's all you need. You know that everything will be added to you. As a roundup, let me read this scripture. I hope you have been blessed by what I'm sharing with you this morning. This is our first uh, a session on our journey to devotion. We'll be looking into all kinds of things. And if, if you feel that there's something you want me to talk about or to share in regards to devotion, please let me know. Please, I, I want to, uh, you know, uh, 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 beg of you, if you're listening to, you know, this broadcast, you will see that we have not really done much of, you know, advertisement because I'm just flowing as, as the Spirit of God will lead me. But please, if you're listening, speak to other people. Tell them about, you know, the Potter's Gate online radio streaming. Tell them about what you're hearing. Tell them how, you know, if at least if you know what you've been hearing so far has been a blessing to you, let them know. Let them tune in. I'm, I'm hoping that God will give us the grace and give me, you know, the, the capacity to take this. There are a lot of things that I'm, you know, I'm trying to do, you know, to, just to get, you know, uh, 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 the best signal and, you know, uh, uh, and, and be able to communicate, you know, all that, you know, the father has laid in my heart. And obviously, we're going to be inviting. I'm going to be inviting other men of God that the Lord will grant me the grace to invite. You know, my friends to come, maybe share of their own desire and their heart. You know, with you. So, so this is a platform that we're creating that I believe will pave the way 
for that which heaven is about to do in our time. We've stepped into a new spiritual, you know, uh, era. We've entered into a new spiritual, you know, uh, uh, day and all kinds of things. We've not been through this path before. So all all, all that we're step we're doing today basically is, you know, you know, uh, uh, is a first hand experience. We we're, we're testing the waters here. Right? The the way I did ministry, you know, twenty five years ago has completely changed from the way ministry is defined today. So I'm learning a new. So it, please pardon me if if I'm not getting certain things right or I'm not sounding right, you know, or you know something is 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 missing somewhere. We'll get it right. We'll get it. We'll get, we'll, we'll sort it out. But please let people know. You know, like like the page. You know, on on our Facebook or on my Spreaker. Uh, you know, uh, um you know channel please just do whatever you can to you know to push this this message do whatever god you know uh, uh excuse me do whatever god has given you the ability and the power to do if you feel like supporting please support i i, I will be more than grateful there are a lot of uh, you know equipments that i'm trying to get to just to give you the best we want this to be the best remember worship is about excellence it's not about being mediocre. No, no, no. There's nothing mediocre about worship. If you're going to worship him, you're going to worship him with the best of the best. And when I say the best of the best, I know your, your, your mind is already, you know, thinking about money. No, we're not just thinking about money. Money basically puts value on what we're doing for God. So please, if you want to support with money, go ahead and do that. I will really appreciate it. In fact, most of the things that you know, we're using right now, the, the, you know, you've been able to listen to me right now is because certain people who really don't want to be known, you know, have, have you know, made it, you know, uh, in fact, not certain people, just one person. <laughs> because if I say certain people, then you have an idea. Or maybe I'm talking about three, five, no, no. There's a brother who somehow the Lord has laid in, in his heart just to assist me. And he tries. And I, and I know the Lord will continue to bless this wonderful brother, uh, uh, you know, as, as he sees the vision and sees, you know, you know the, the, the hand of the Lord, you know, in that which I'm doing. And they believe that he needs to support me. And I thank God for that. And one of these days, I will be talking about this brother because when we talk about supporting, because that's a dimension of worship. You see, our offering also is worship to God. We'll talk about that. And I'll tell you how God can raise people to support you and support whatever you're doing without you, you know, going crazy and cajoling people and lying to people and forcing people to give. God is calling us to understand the ministry you know, of, of, of the priesthood in this last day from a different perspective. We've got to understand that even the way we used to collect offering has to change. The way we the way we talk about money has to change. You know, the way we talk about gift has to change. So we, we want to really look at you know you know the whole the whole redefinition of ministry and how our life you know connects with this thing. So as I as I round up I would like to read the scripture in Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 3, this is actually where, you know, uh, uh, the foundation of this devotion, this uh, uh, initiative of devotion comes from. Now, let me read from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12 says, sit, sit to it. I, I like that word, sit to it. In other words, this is very important. This is very crucial. It says, sit to it, brothers. So we're talking about, you know, believers here, Christians here. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. So that's, that's, that's an admonition. It says, see to it. So he's telling us, how do we see to this thing that we don't, you know, that, that we don't have, we don't develop a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away, that turns away. From the living God. In fact, let me just read this. Then maybe in our next devotion, I will expand on this because of time. Verse 3 says, verse 13, excuse me. Verse 13 says, but encourage one another daily. That's the key word. I love it. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. So that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Oh, I love that scripture. See to it, brothers, that none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, verse 13. But encourage one another daily, as long as, as, long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened 
by sin's deceitfulness. You see, sin is very deceitful. Huh? Sin can bring you to a point where you think that you're living a life that is godly, that is, you know, honoring the Father. Yet you are projecting the fruit of deception.